Does fasted cardio increase weight loss? Let's have a look at what the science says. So this is a 2017 systematic review and meta-analysis. It concluded that fasted compared to fed exercise does not increase the amount of weight loss and fat mass loss. The weight loss and fat loss from exercise is more likely to be enhanced through creating a meaningful caloric deficit over a period of time, rather than exercising in fasted or fed states. So for me, this comes down to personal preference. So say you're training in the morning and you might be on quite a tight schedule. You might not have enough time to eat before you want to go and train, which means you're gonna train fasted, which is absolutely fine. And carbohydrates are stored in skeletal muscle, so you're more than likely going to have enough energy stores from the day before. For others, including myself, they prefer not to train on an empty stomach, so they'll always eat before they train. But if you take an exercise in isolation, it will burn the same amount of calories whether you've eaten or not beforehand. The main way that fasting is going to help us lose weight is that we would usually delay the timing of our first meal of the day, therefore reducing our eating window. This is going to make it easier for us to eat less during the day and therefore increase our calorie deficit. How do we calculate a calorie deficit? Well, the first thing you'll want to find out is your total daily energy expenditure. This is basically the number of calories that you burn on a daily basis. I have one of these calculators on my website, but you can also just Google TDEE. It's going to ask for things like your age, your gender, your height, your weight, and your activity level. And this is going to give you your maintenance calories, or a rough estimate of it. And this basically means that if you consume that number of calories every day, you should maintain your weight. So then once we've got that, we then need to calculate our deficit. So I recommend starting between 10 and 15% which may not seem like that much, but it's just a starting point. Don't go too aggressive with calculating your deficit. If you go too hard too soon, all you're gonna do is to reduce the likelihood of sticking to it in the first place. And also subconsciously, you're gonna reduce your physical output. So start off slow and you can always increase it later down the line. What I'd say is weigh yourself every day, but only compare on a weekly basis. And then say after a couple of weeks, if you want to more aggressively increase the deficit, then you can, or maintain if you're happy with the progress. There's two ways I like to incorporate intensity increases into my training. The first is a rest pause set. After you've completed your last set to near failure, rest for 15 seconds. Then attempt to push out another two or three reps with the same weight. These are slightly better suited to the higher rep ranges. If you want to increase intensity on the lower rep ranges, you can implement drop sets. You want to aim to reach failure on your last set. You're then going to reduce the weight by anywhere between 10 to 30% and perform another set to failure. You can then repeat this once or twice more with no rest in between. These methods don't need to be included in every session, but if your programming allows, they can be useful to break through those stubborn training plateaus. These are my really simple overnight protein oats. For this, first of all, you're gonna need 70 grams of oats. Then we're gonna add 75 grams of low fat natural Greek yogurt. I'm using 2% yogurt here. We're then gonna go in with 120 ml of milk, just using a semi-skim milk here. 30 grams of protein of your choice. So I'm using a vanilla protein here, but you can use any flavor you like. I'm just gonna give it a good mix. You could of course add any other flavorings you like. So you could add some cocoa in there, you could add some vanilla paste if you want. And obviously depending on the type of protein and the flavor that you use, it will depend on what else you add to it. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna seal it up, you're gonna whack it in the fridge, and it's gonna go from looking like this to looking like this. And then it's just down to what toppings you want to add. So for me, I'm just gonna go nice and simple today. I'm gonna to go for a little bit of granola, just to add a little bit of crunch. Some berries, so I've got some blueberries and some raspberries here. Blueberries and raspberries, sorry, should I say. Top it off with a little bit of honey. And there you go, that's my nice and simple overnight protein oats. Let me know what you think. Here are three things that really helped my sleep over the past year. These are of course on top of a focus on irregularity, environment and caffeine consumption. The first is CBD. Using my wood band, I can see a clear improvement in my sleep quality when I'm taking CBD. It doesn't make you feel drowsy, but I find it helps you to relax by not allowing my brain to overthink. I use a 12% one and take three drops under the tongue around two to three hours before bed. The second is blue light blocking glasses. The research on these is slightly less clear, but in theory, they help with the production of the sleep hormone, melatonin. I wear these for around two hours before going to bed, and I find I spend less time awake in bed when I've used them. And finally, zinc and magnesium. There's a ton of research showing the sleep aiding benefits here, and both of them help with improving the restorative phase of sleep, i.e. sleep quality. They do this by activating the parasympathetic nervous system, aka rest and digest. That's the system responsible for making you calm and relaxed. You're also going to get vivid dreams with this one. Hope that helps. At some point, you've probably come across this atrocity in the gym. Here's a few tips to help you get the most bang for your buck on the dumbbell lateral raise. One of the key limitations to using dumbbells to train the lateral head of the shoulder is that it puts all of the focus on the shortened range. In this part of the movement, there is barely any activation. So start about a foot away from your body. That way you'll keep the tension on the working muscle. It will also prevent you using momentum to get the weight up. Moving your hands a few inches forward at the top of the movement 
will help align the lateral delt and also help isolation. To limit momentum further, you can perform the exercise using a bench. You can do this seated, kneeling or standing, depending on the type of bench. It's important to train a muscle through its full range, and therefore we need to target the length and range. This is best done using a cable machine, but if you haven't got access to one, then I'd recommend this setup. It's quite a small range of motion, but you'll be able to target the length and range of the lateral head. In summary, control the weight, limit momentum, focus on time and attention, and working the muscle through its full range. Here's the kit that I use for running. I use two sets of trainers. The first of these Hocker Clifton 8s. I use these for my long runs in the easy mileage. They're fairly lightweight and they've got a lot of cushioning, so they're going to give me the most support for the joints when I'm running, especially those long runs. Then I've got these, the Hocker Carbon X3s. So I use these for my speed work and for the races. So rather than for cushioning, the foam in this is designed for propulsion. And it's also got a carbon plate in the sole, which is also going to help with that. They're also very lightweight as well. Then I use compression socks. So for a long time, I've struggled with a bit of compartment syndrome in my tibialis anterior. So I find these help with a little bit with circulation. For runners, this is probably more personal preference. So then tech-wise, so I use the Apple Watch. So I use this for the GPS and the heart rate. I find it's a good way for me to track my runs. Also, enough good features that I can add music to it. So I just need to add a playlist to it for my phone. I just need some wireless headphones. So I use some AirPods here. And that means I don't have to take my phone with me on the runs. Let me know what you think. I've just come across some software that makes any microphone sound professional. So make your audio go from sounding like this, sounding like this. I'm going to show you how. So the tool I found is from Adobe and it uses AI to reduce noise and enhance your voice so it's podcast-like quality. Once you've recorded your clip on whatever device you use, you need to be able to download the audio as an MP3. Most video editors will be able to do this. Then you just need to head over to podcast.adobe.com slash enhance or you can follow the link in the description. From there, you just need to drop the audio file into the tool here and it's totally free. You just need to create an account. I will say that it doesn't negate the need to use a proper microphone. Clearly, the better audio that you give the enhancer, the better the final product is going to be. But I think it's pretty cool for your average content creator. So let me know if you give it a try. Here are a few deadlift basics. First thing is to either take your shoes off or use a thin flat bottom trainer. This will mean the bar will start slightly higher and you'll be more stable. Next is feet width. You want a fairly narrow stance. The reason is hand positioning. The wider your stance, the wider your hands are going to have to be, and this will result in your torso being lower and your hips higher. I usually aim for a hand position around where the knurling starts. Addressing the bar. You want the bar to be roughly over your midfoot. This will help the bar travel in a straight line. Find your grip and then lower your hips until your shins are touching the bar. This is your starting position. Then engage your lats and externally rotate your shoulders as if you were trying to bend the bar. From there, think about pushing the floor away as you stand up. It's a very similar movement to a leg press. As you stand up, you're going to push your hips forward, but be sure not to overextend. On the way down, don't break your knees too early. You're just going to reverse the movement, so push your hips back first to clear your knees, and then you can lower down to the floor. Hope that helps. Here's how I edit photos on an iPhone and take a photo from pretty good to almost picture perfect. All these were taken and edited on my phone. The first thing to do is make sure you're taking your pictures in raw format. This is going to allow you the most freedom when it comes to editing. Then to the edit itself. So the iPhone can sometimes make pictures a little overexposed, so I'm going to use highlights to reduce the lightest parts of the image. And I'm going to bring up brilliance a little bit. This is going to lighten some of the shadows in the picture. From there, I'm just going to make a couple of little tweaks. So I'm going to bring up the black slightly, and then to the colors. So saturation is going to bring up all of the colors, and then vibrancy is going to bring up those colors with the least saturation. Sometimes this can make it a little bit too warm, a little bit too orange. So I'm going to use warmth and tint just to reduce this slightly. These are very subtle changes. And then to the filters. So I usually like vivid or dramatic. I'm just going to go slight increase in the filter here. And then that's it. That's done. And then sometimes I'll take it further and play around with some of the other aspects. But I think this is a pretty good starting template to follow. Let me know what you think. Here's my plan to get lean. I don't mean getting shredded to the point where I'm having to sacrifice things that I really enjoy. But what I'd call athletic and something I can maintain. So for me, my maintenance calorie is around 2,800. So I'm going to aim for 2,500 to create a 300 calorie deficit. I'm also getting for at least 2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So for me, that's at least 160 grams a day. I'm also going to focus on whole and unprocessed foods as much as I possibly can. And then I'm also going to delay my breakfast slightly, just to shorten my eating window. Nothing too extreme, it's so like 10, 10, 30. Exercise wise, I'm going to stick with exercises that I have specific goals with. So for me, that's running and resistance training. I'm going to do each of these three times a week. All of these exercises are going to have a focus on progressive overload. On the days that I'm not running, I usually go for a walk just to help the step count. And I want to be outside as much as possible and get in some sunlight where I can. On the days that the weather's not so great, I'll usually go onto the treadmill and I'll stick a movie or TV show on and I'll do like 30 to 40 minutes just to keep it ticking over. Finally, I want to be consistent with my sleep to make sure I'm fully recovered. I'll show you the results in a few weeks time.
Here's my attempt to run Eliud Kipchoge's world record marathon pace. That's a 2.52 km, or just over 21 km per hour. I was aiming for around 2 minutes. It's mad to think he held this for 2 hours. After about 50 seconds, the treadmill decided it had enough, and despite a second try, it wouldn't go for any longer than this. I'll have to try this again on a different treadmill, or even try to set it up outside. If you've tried this, let me know how you got on. Here's how to make a protein mug cake. You'll need 10 grams of flour, 24 grams of protein powder, 5 grams of cocoa, half a teaspoon of baking powder. In a separate bowl, mix one egg with 60 ml of milk, and then combine with the dry ingredients in a large mug. Whisk together until smooth. Add seven grams of at least 70% dark chocolate, some whole and some shavings. Microwave on full power for 45 to 60 seconds. Keep an eye on it. Let it rest for around three minutes and enjoy. Pretty macro friendly dessert. Of course, you could make a smaller portion if you preferred, or just do what I did. What's the best advice you've ever received? What if it can turn out better than you can imagine? Second question, what's the worst advice you've ever received? Be realistic. If you want to start going to the gym, here are my tips. Start slowly. The first part of this is just about turning up. It's about forming a habit. If you go in there and you only do four sets of an exercise, you've still accomplished something. Next time you might go in there and do two exercises and so on. Go light and don't worry about other people watching you. Believe me, they're far too focused on their own training. Don't copy others. Everyone's at different stages of their fitness journeys with varying goals. Don't compare your chapter one to their chapter 20. Have a rough idea of what you're gonna do before you get there. Don't try and wing it. By having a plan, not only will you save time and mental energy, but it'll also give you something to focus on while you're training. Don't be afraid to seek guidance on how to use a specific machine or how to perform an exercise correctly. People love being asked how to do something. Consistency is key when it comes to seeing results. Don't agonize over the finer details. Focus on adherence, stimulus, and frequency first. Remember, everyone starts somewhere. Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't see immediate results. Stick with it and you'll start to see improvements over time. Good luck. Here are six gym tips in one minute. Here, there is too much bicep activation and not enough lat activation. Think about pulling the weight towards your hip, driving your elbow up and back in a controlled manner. This is doing absolutely nothing to warm up your rotator cuff. Instead, use a cable or a band so that the resistance is against the muscle you're looking to activate. If you're struggling with squat depth, try raising your heels. This will enable the knee to travel further forward and thus allow your hips to sit lower, which will result in a deeper and more upright position. When performing a Romanian deadlift, think about pushing your hips back like you're trying to touch an imaginary wall behind you. With depth, you don't need to lower the bar to the floor. For most people, around mid-shin is sufficient. To better target the pecs when performing a dumbbell press, retract your shoulder blades like you're trying to squeeze the bench. By focusing on pinning your shoulders back, you'll be able to better target the pecs instead of the anterior delts. If you're struggling with grip on a deadlift, you have a number of options. The simplest is to alternate your grip by supinating one hand. This will stop the bar from rolling out of your hands. <laughs> 